And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Ash Harrowing, but a little bit different version of Ash Harrowing than what we've played before and that what's more popular. Uh, basically though, our, our um, game plan is the same. You know, like we're trying to get as many Ashes in play as possible. We're trying to level up Ash um, because whenever you level up an Ash, it's really powerful of you attack, you frostbite their strongest enemy and then it can't block and you know, it attacks for a lot of damage. So we're pairing Ash with Harrowing. Like we want Ash to die and then we use Rekindler to bring back Ash and eventually, you know, hopefully have like a lot of Ashes die and then eventually use Harrowing and bring back a bunch of dead Ashes. Um, that's kind of the plan. How are, like what I'm going with here is I'm going with more of a Freljord and more of a um, Frostbite theme than normal in this kind of deck. You can see with like the Rhyme Tusk Shamans and all three flash freeze in here. Usually these kind of decks are like pretty shadow isles heavy and kind of controlly with, with like shadow isles removal and ruination and stuff like that. Um, but I think I want to focus more on the frostbite aspect. And uh, Ash is the only creature that's power five or greater. So we have the three babbling Bjergs that um, whenever we play it, we'll draw Ash. So like we have. Uh, three tutors for Ash in the deck, so like we'll have more ways to be able to go grab it. Make sure we we have it. And then whenever Ash dies, we also have like Mist Call that can bring it back. We have Scribe of Sorrows that um, you know can can create an Ash if we're lucky in hand, or just other you know other random things in here. Um, you know, like so so I'm going just a little bit more on the Frostbite theme, especially with the Rhyme Tusk Shamans. I kind of feel like. The Frostbite cards are pretty good and one to go that route. I think that's an ice cream truck outside. I think there's an ice cream truck outside. Anyway, here we go. Let's let's play some games. Uh, Ash Harrowing. Let's go. No. No, Blackjack. No, Meme Day Monday was yesterday. Today we're just going with, with some regular pretty decent decks, you know, like not not necessarily tier one, but uh, good fun decks to play. And ones that are that are um, uh, ones are pretty good. Do I have any Heimer control videos? Sure do. Um, played a lot of Heimerdinger, but I guess not a lot recently. Um, get rid of Rekindler. I'll keep Bjerg, because I can find Ash. Um, do you have any like anything that you want Heimer Dinger to be paired with? I guess we have like I have eight videos that have Heimer Dinger in the name of them. February, March. Only one in April, the Starlet Heimerdinger. Yeah, there is a Heimer con control meta deck. Um, if you want to check out like the meta list, like the Heimer Karma. There's a Starlet Heimerdinger, which is pretty cool. Um, but this is the uh, Starlet Seer. That card's cool. This is the. Uh, no, that's not the right. That's not the right video. But we'll go with that. There you go. There's just a just Heimerdinger deck without other champions. If you want to check that out. And. As far as me playing the Heimer meta deck, Heimer Karma. The last time I played Heimer Karma, honestly, I didn't do very good. Oh no, I did. Never mind. We went four and one. Never mind. Never mind. We did really good. All right, there you go. That last one. That's that's the Heimer Karma deck that you're uh, probably looking for. 
Okay. So I am going to... Playing Babbling Bjerg here. I I basically just don't... You know, if I if I go for, like, attacking with Rhymefang Wolf and plus Brittle Steel, I don't really have... You know, I don't want to just play Brittle Steel and then play nothing else. So we're going to uh, hold on to that. Play this 4-4 Bjerg. They have a pretty sweet setup here. Double Starlet Seer and Puff Cat Peddler. They have really done a good job setting up those first uh, four turns. That's a really sweet setup. I don't think I should give them a free Mystic Shot. Got a really sweet setup here, but we do have Ash. And Ash is really good. I think I just pass. Okay. So we can make all these things not be able to block. Let's see, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so they have to have removal for Ash plus removal for a 4-4. Four, four. And they could just have like a harsh winds. Um Maybe we go this route. You know, we could just do a burst speed and just, you know, like harsh winds, harsh winds. Uh, I can't do two harsh winds. We'll we'll go this route. That's fine. Hey, Lugarox. Welcome. All right, Crystal Arrow. So this is gonna frostbite. All their and you know. Basically everything. All their enemies with three or less health, so that's everything. And creatures with zero power can't block, so, they, so no, nothing will be able to block.
Flash freeze. No, Omen Hawk. I want just more damage out here. They're not playing anything. I I assume they have a, a harsh winds that they're gonna use on two of these things. Yep. I unfortunately only you know, like drawing the Omen Hawk was my worst draw. Like that was the only card that I could draw that didn't kill my opponent. Oh, I guess does, is that thing gonna block now? I guess they get to block with that thing now. Oh, they had a Harsh Winds plus a Brittle Steel. Okay. So just trying to kill me with Ezreal triggers and trying to um, unload their hand for Jinx. So even the cast a, um, let's see, let's do just the regular flash freeze. Even if they cast, um, Super Mega Death Rocket, kill my Ash. We will have a new Ash. All right, so no blocks. No blocks, that's a win. Maybe, I mean, obviously they could just do nine damage to me. We'll see. Let's be close. Not a good sign. Uh, barely. We have five damage here. So close. So close. But that's a victory. The Starlet Seers never, never really did anything, did they? They never drew... You know, they never drew the ally that they were going to have, like, with... They got all those plus one, plus ones. GG's. Man, that was close. Because, you know, we were definitely dead if we didn't kill him that turn. Like, that was, that was it. Alright, definitely always mulligan the 10 mana card, of course. And... Um, I do like Shaman in this matchup, but I kind of need ways to deal with, I guess I'll just get rid of Elixir of Iron, I'll keep these two. I do kind of need ways to deal with Yasuo, or ways to kill them quick, you know, need to race Yasuo. Yeah, it was, it was like they were setting up the one turn kill Trindamir, but Trindamir never showed up. It was kind of like that. I like getting the Frostbite trigger. 
it's not like we had anything planned on at turn three anyway. We have really drawn our top end. Yasuo is so incredibly valuable that I just, I was kind of calling their bluff. I didn't think they would block with Yasuo because it's just too valuable of a card. scared not even attacking with Yasuo alright so they are tapped out so I don't have to worry about Rhyme Touch Shaman dying that'd be the card I'd be worried about dying I shouldn't attack with the one one. Yeah, I probably should not have attacked with the one one. The one one would have, like I was thinking like the one one was gonna die to Minotaur Reckoner Yasuo, but I mean I guess this thing just dies now. Yeah, what's up, Tiso? This is the power of the Iceborne. Hmm. I need this Ash to die so I can bring it back. Um, I'm not sure about that. He says, I heard that people that reach Master before the 20th get some sort of reward. Um, I, I mean, I think there are, there is just going to be rewards for each, each specific level. You know, like there's a reward for Master, reward for Platinum, reward for Diamond, like all that kind of stuff. Like there, there is going to be a, like, cause there, the, uh, ratings will be reset. Um... But I don't know. I don't know specifically what it is. This works. 
Just gotta get that card out of here because that card is so, so good. Fortunately, we have 12 mana. I really need 13. I need to be able to play Rekindler and Harsh Winds. I mean, obviously, I have to play Harsh Winds. But, um... I guess I have to play both Harsh Winds. Yasuo just dominated. I don't remember the last time I played against a Yasuo deck and they didn't have a turn 4 Yasuo. It just doesn't happen. But whenever we're going to play it later, we're like never going to have Yasuo. <laughs> That's just how it goes. So you can put this out in the middle and then you can use the eye to see what would happen. So we just get one Ash right now. Ash would frostbite one thing. The th three one would frostbite another. Uh, it's just not going to be good enough. All right, one on one. The Yasuo Minotaur Reckoner combo wrecked me. Which happens. Which happens, nothing wrong with that. When There's a reason why you want to mulligan your really expensive cards, because you don't need them until later, and you know, like that game, drawing, harrowing, then rekindle her right away. Those are not cards we need. Um, we, how, like, how's this game going to play out? Like, we're just going to wolf flash free something, I guess? Hey, J. Rody. Alright, good. We found Ash. It's a good start. Save the Ice Fill Archer. Ooh. Mmm, that is tempting. It is pretty tempting. So they're willing to get rid of a Shadow Assassin to do two points of damage. Shadow Assassin plus Glimpse Beyond. It's a lot of card advantage. They have nine cards over there in hand. It's a lot. It's a lot of card advantage. Could definitely be Vile Feast, like that could be the reason why they wanted to block. Was because of Vile Feast. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you got yeah, Bannerman Zed with Lucian. 
Yeah, Bannerman Zed is a great deck. That's a, that's a really good quality deck for sure. Yeah, but Cortec, uh, Cortec, I do, I do uh, donation decks. If you want me to play your deck on stream, it's just a ten dollar donation, and there's a donation link down below. Um, but then also, you know, I also will, you know, of course, uh, if you just want to, um, you know, no guarantees that I'll that I'll play it, but I will also, um, you know, kind of take a look and and put it. If you want to send me your your deck, I will also kind of put it in the. In like my archive of decks to play, maybe at some point. But if if you definitely want me to play any deck, uh, just a uh, that's why I do donation decks for ten dollars each, and I'll play them through five games of ranked and everything like normal. Withering Whale would be pretty rough. So obviously my opponent has that because that'd be the worst possible card for me to see. Um, well, come on, Ash. One out of three shot. Hey, how about that? That is a cool combo. It is a pretty cool combo. Alright, so that levels up Ash. So now they can't block. Go straight. We can go straight to attacks. Um, and also, core deck. This this is the last time I played Bannerman Zed. That's kind of like your deck. That's my Bannerman Zed deck. All right. Well, here we go. Let's go straight to attacks. This is where we need need to start finding those rekindlers and harrowings and stuff like that. Especially rekindler. There we go. Basically just cycling this crystal arrow. So the three mana to flash freeze this thing, so they don't kill my rhyme tusk, my rhyme tusk shaman. I have, I don't know why this three three is attacking. That doesn't seem to make any sense. Why the three three is attacking? I'm not sure about that one. But again, we can go straight to attacks, not let him block.
Yeah, surrender. So there we go, two and one. Thought it was frostbitten. That is a lot of a lot of frostbite cards in here. That's what we're going with. Lots of frostbite. Garen Lucian. Is Avalanche good against Garen Lucian? Pot potentially. Potentially. Sorry, excuse me. Let's get rid of these two cards. Avalanche is potentially going to be very good. Potentially won't do very much at all. We'll just kind of have to, you know, play and see. I'm hoping they have um, a lot of like their one mana two ones and a lot of Lucians. Maybe Bright Steel Protector. You know, a bunch of two toughness things. Not War Chefs and Laurent Protege. Not that. I don't just hold up hold out on Omen Hawk. Can we just play Omen Hawk right away? Uh, especially with us having the attack on turn one. We just play this play this thing out because who knows when our next two allies are gonna be. You wanna trade birds? They do not want to trade birds. Alright, this one I can hold out on. Um you know what? Never mind. Not gonna hang out. No one goes hungry. I wanna kill this war chefs. Wow, still passed again. That's kind of surprising. All right, well, we'll fi fire it off. Hey, what's up, Rex? We got a bunch of sweet decks today. These are definitely some good ones. Fun ones to play. I like playing Ash stuff. So they could have like twin disciplines. No, don't fight. You know, single combat. Don't kill my Ash before I can miss call. All right, they're killing that thing. Ash versus Garen. Ooh. So having Ash die would be really good for us, because we're going to miscall it back this turn, then we can rekindle her back next turn. So it would be good for us if, if Ash died.
Yeah, Avaros and Hearthguard. Um, the basically the the main reason why I don't want, nor why I'm not, why I don't have Avaros and Hearthguard in here, is. Um, Uh, I should I should just I should just frostbite the Garen. That's too cute. I could kill Ash by blocking this thing anyway. They would attack with a three two. Yeah, that was too cute. Yeah, that was definitely too cute. That was just a wrong play. Anyway, uh, Babbling Bjerg. I don't want any other five five power things. I want Babbling Bjerg to always draw Ash. So that's why we don't have Avaros and Hearthguard in here. Yeah, that was that was a bad play. They they were still gonna attack with this thing. That was a bad play. Good draw. That could be worthwhile. So am I gonna get two crystal arrows? We'll find out. If you have two ashes in play when they level up, do you do they both generate a crystal arrow? I mean, well, I guess we may not find out because we'll we may win the game here. But frost fight, you don't want to level up crystal arrow on top of the deck, so we may have two of those on top of the deck. But I guess we won't really find out. So they're dead. And we're three and one. They went to attacks with the Garen, but they need to play more blockers. Instead. Ugh. Ash is a fun card. I like this card. I do think that, that Rhyme Touch Shaman could be pretty decent here, but I feel like we need some more early stuff, and we don't have Ash right now, so... Not having Ash means I want to mulligan more. Ash is your favorite too? Yeah, I, I, Ash is definitely one of my favorite uh, champions. Real fun card to play. Go get a Moment Hawk. Hercules.
All right, attack. Do I have any Karma Lux lists? Nothing special that's like my own. Um, okay. Um, I'd say that, let's see, I guess we need to protect this thing. Cause I need that, that thing out here. Uh, Karma Lux. I remember, yeah, I remember the last time I played Karma Lux, I didn't do well either and, and kind of put it down. Uh, but this was my list. That was back at March 9th. But that was also just a, a you know, really stock list that was like from, you know, like the Mobile Addicts metagame at the time. So got to do this on the Draven um, because if I try to uh, frostbite the Katarina, since they played the Draven, they now have Spinning Axe, so they would be able to uh, still give the Katarina one power and still have Katarina strike and and uh, re be recalled. So going for the Draven instead. So I passed to them to see if they would play anything. Man, my hand is really bad. Where's Babbling Bjerg? Or Ash? Oh, I can't wait. Um... I'm not sure if it's just a, a bad combination of champions. Karma and Lux. Lash well, will be leveled up. Three cards in hand right now. Let's play the Omenhawk first. I'm probably going to be challenging the Crimson Disciple. No, let's take the elusive thing. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know, you know. So it's been like a month since I've, since I've really played the deck. Um, so honestly, I don't, I don't really know. Really, I've only had one thing die so far. Harrowing would put a three-one into play. Yuck. Like that's it, just a three-one. We need some more things to die, I guess. Yeah. 10 mana, ephemeral 3 1. Yeah, that was a really gross hand that we had there that game. You saw it as bad as it can get. That was as bad as it could get for us. You know, drew both harrowings and 
you know, nothing really in between. I mean, I guess I should have kept the Rhyme Tusk Shaman, I guess, whenever I was mulliganing. That would have gave me at least something to do, but... Oh, well. I think, like, I think that's a matchup that's usually going to be pretty good for us, but... You see, like, we need we need Ash, and so, you know, like, we have the Bjergs for more Ashes, because um, we kind of have to start there. Um... But yeah, so that's Ash Harrowing. I like I like this deck, and I liked this version. I, I still, you know, I like this version more than the traditional um, very heavy Shadow Isles and going, like, Ruination and all that kind of stuff. Um, I like this instead. Um, it is, yeah, it is possible we don't have enough creatures, for sure. For sure. Um... Yeah, absolutely. That's that's definitely a possibility that uh, maybe we should just be, you know, maybe we should just be playing something besides Harrowing so we don't have enough creatures, potentially, or just play one Harrowing and, um, you know, something else. There's a lot of great options in all of these, um, in these, uh, <clears throat> two regions. There's a lot of great options. But I liked our deck. I liked our deck. But yeah, the there is you know, we have twenty two units, eighteen spells, so you know there we did have a couple of those games, you know, like where we would have where we would draw like, you know, thirty percent units, seventy percent spells, and you know that that does that is kinda tough and that, that can certainly happen. All right, there we go. That's Ash Harrowing. Still a good a good start. Three and two. You know, 60%. We'll take that. We'll try to replicate that through the other decks. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like uh, button over there and leave a comment. Let me know what you uh, think of the deck and, you know, just the new set, the new cards, anything else. Feel free to leave a comment there. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Ash Harrowing, and I'll see you for the next video.